We are rolling. Mo, you need to watch that counter that we actually rolling? get down to zero. And so, go ahead, Dad. You had said there were a couple of things you thought of. Th there since were. Last... Hold on. Let me always let me stop talking because otherwise it is. Oh yes. Why don't you stop talking? I remember uh, also when we before we were married, we were discussing different things that uh, places we would go that were memorable, and I mentioned uh, Asbury Park, uh, and that was indeed memorable. But there were a couple of others that were not only as memorable but more memorable. Of course, the biggest uh, memory before we were married was the trip out to California to visit uh, uh, Jan's uh, sister, Dolores, out there. And I may have mentioned that before, but that was a wonderful trip with lots of pictures. But even a more memorable uh, uh, time was the time I spent down at the Four Winds in Seaside with uh, Jan and her parents, this is before we're married, uh, at the Four Winds bungalows with uh, her father very much into fishing, wanting to uh, uh, fish the barnegat, and he was expert. He knew all of the right places to go to get fish and crabs and clams and such like. Uh, and, and we spent a lot of time on the boat. And Tootie uh, too. And uh, good old Aunt Edna, Tootie, uh, she, would, she would be there as well, and that was probably uh, one of the most memorable times. I, I don't remember how many times we uh, I was I was there. Uh, I know at least once, and maybe there was a couple. I I, I don't know if there you remember. Mother, I remember a time when I had to work, <laughs> and Andy was off, and he got to go with my parents, and I had to work. And well, we had fishing to do. <laughs> I was really upset. He was really wiggling into. Oh, family. <laughs> okay. Good. Hey, guys, stop thumping around up there. You hear me? No. Thank you. Are they? Oh, gosh, yeah, I hear them pump, pump, pump. That was good. Um, I want to hear about Olympic Park. Got it right. Okay. Um, so. There was a, a wonderful park in Irvington. I was there for I don't know how many years called Olympic Park and it was a great place for all the kids to go there was amusements they had this great wooden roller coaster and they had a huge Olympic sized swimming pool it was much larger than Olympic size it was like a lake it was of course when <laughs> with I was a sand young, beach it seemed huge and um, also they had a great roller skating rink where the girls would there wear their little skirts, their little short skirts, and they'd have the organ music and roller skating was was a big time, and, and we would go frequently. Yeah, uh, very frequently. It was a good pastime uh, and, and an enjoyable time where all the friends and the, uh, uh, kids from uh, high school would meet and mm -hmm. go roller skating. Roller skating, big time. Yep, yep. Good. So nice. Good. Um, one minor comment. Don't refer to what you said before. I'm going to be moving stuff all over the place and cutting stuff. Just tell me your stories. That's a very minor point. All right, so now, um, anything else you want to talk about from before the honeymoon or pickup? Can you think of what I, what I may have missed? Those were the things that came to my mind. Yeah, all right, that's all I can think of, too. Okay, that's fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to you've returned from your honeymoon. Okay, so we got back from our honeymoon, and I want to hear about, um, you know, it, it's your first year of marriage, anything interesting going on there, the house, uh, or not the house, the, the apartment, and already what I'm noticing, you guys are a lot more skilled at this last time than the first time. You're just like, ready, I'm, I'm on, <laughs> but also I'm seeing right away, your stories are getting longer quicker, and I'm getting a little bit more, so let's keep okay. them a little bit shorter and punchier, um, but with that, who, who's going to start? Uh... I, I can I can start on something. Okay. Uh, you, you guys know You don't need me. Now we had a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, honeymoon in in Florida, and we're getting back from the honeymoon in Florida, and we're going to our apartment. And at that time, it was on Clark Avenue, in in Bloomfield, New Jersey, uh, and I recall vividly that Jan at that time had a Plymouth, a 1950 Plymouth car and that was a that was a key vehicle at the time 
uh, I was out uh, looking for a car. Oh, no, I had a car. I had my Mercury, my 1953 Mercury convertible, which was, by any standards, a bomb, but I loved it. It was the, it was the best, best car I ever had. My uh, father couldn't believe he paid for uh, $500 for it because it was... <laughs> It, it was it was uh, it was a beast, and I spent a lot of time working on it and getting it back into shape. But at any rate, I used that car uh, at the time. I was working in Allenby Dumont Laboratories in Allentown, I believe, Pennsylvania. Not in Allentown. Um, gee. Anyway, not too far from Bloomfield, and that was the car I used back and forth to work. Uh, Jan was working at uh, Lane and Fink, I mm -hmm. believe, at that time, in with her aunt Edna, or mm -hmm. under her aunt Edna. Go ahead. But then I moved from that department, and they put me in the accounts receivable, which I loved the, the job, and it wasn't that far. And uh, I had my little green Plymouth, and uh, yes. but. Um, we had looked for an apartment before we were married, and we found this three and a half room apartment in Bloomfield. And uh, as luck or unluck would have it, it became available because there was a couple that had put a deposit on it. And uh, like a week before they got married, he was killed in an automobile accident. So the it would became available. And our landlord, they, the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Tenor, Italian people who treated us like their kids. They, they were just wonderful. Um, and the place was really not in good shape. And my father oh, yes. sanded yeah, the floors key. and made it beautiful. Uh, come, he came in. I, of course, I worked with him, but he, he was the instigator, the leader, getting out the floor scrapers. Oh, we got to scrape these floors. Oh, we got to paint these walls. Oh, we got to take this old wallpaper off the kitchen walls. <laughs> And, and there he was, uh, guiding and directing me what had to be done. We wound up with a, with a Class A apartment after the whole thing was refurbished. And we wanted kids right away because we wanted four kids before we were 30, or before I was 30. So um, anyway, we're married like six, seven months, and nothing's happening. And it was April, I believe, and somebody knocked on the door, rang the doorbell. We were on the second floor, and I went to go down the carpeted steps, and I slipped, and I fell down the whole flight of stairs. And to this day, I have no idea who was there, because by the time I got up, uh, they were gone. Anyway, I got pregnant the next month. <laughs> <laughs> it took a fall down the stairs to do it. <laughs> Could have been a tip uterus, I was told. <laughs> Anyway, and that was Karen. That was Karen. That was Karen. Yes, yes. Getting going. And um, she was born. Good. In okay, I want to take a. a to, I want you to re. Uh, this will be a nice cut in. So go ahead with Karen. Karen was born. Karen hold was. On, hold on. Let me stop. Oh. Okay. Karen was born in January of '61. She was born between two big snowstorms. So much snow that when we came home from the hospital. Andy had to go and pick up my mother and father because there was no place for them to put their car. There was so much snow. But anyway, before that, I, I went into labor and uh, we went to the hospital yes. and it was 26 hours in labor. That was a long labor for, for Jan. That was, but that they was gave you drugs back then. <laughs> <laughs> so when I guess I was pretty ready, yeah. uh, they gave me drugs. And the next thing I knew, I had this little... Yeah, you were happy at that point. <laughs> six pound, 14 ounce baby girl. And, uh, and, and she was the apple of everyone's eye. Uh, yes. Uh, Jan's especially especially uh, Papa. Yes, my Jan's father... father. Uh, and he's into photography, and he starts taking pictures of Karen at every stage of her oh, life. Oh I think uh, his doll. That's his what doll. He that was his that doll. was his doll. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> very good. Very good. Um, we're gonna go backwards a second, so I re realize I'm missing something. Um, Dad, wrap up college. So I graduated from college in 1959 uh, with a degree in blah 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 blah. Uh, 
of course, uh, my cousin Ernie and, and, and Skip uh, got me into, into college, and I graduated Stevens Institute in 1959. Uh, at that time, the uh, degree was Bachelor of Engineering. You, you didn't really specialize in, in a branch. It was engineering, all of it, chemical, electrical, mechanical, the whole, the whole bit. Uh, and that was, uh, that was the, the key and trigger to allow us to get married because I had made that promise that we would not get married before I graduated from college, uh, which I did do. And uh, we had a great celebration and lots of caps and gowns and, and such like. And we missed the fraternity uh, at college. Jen uh, very often went to the fraternity when we had the, uh, the various... Uh, activities. Spring sports weekend was a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, winter carnival. Winter carnival was a big one. Mm -hmm. And and it was our our class uh, class of fifty nine in Chi Phi fraternity that instituted the pajama party on spring sports weekend. So everybody was in pajamas. <laughs> Girls, boys. Mm -hmm. Oh, there were very strict rules at that time. The boys though. were not allowed above the first floor. And the rule was really followed. There was, there well, was no... Well, it was enforced because not only were the boys not allowed above the first floor, there was always a married chaperone in the house monitoring the whole spring sports weekend mm -hmm. activities and what was allowed and what wasn't allowed. I must admit, though, the beer did flow. <laughs> <laughs> and I slept in Dad's bed. Andy sped, and he short sheeted it. <laughs> and here I was with a couple of beers, and I'm like, oh no, he short sheeted the bed. <laughs> but they were good memories. That was standard practice. <laughs> Beautiful. How are we doing on time? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Good. Man, this is great. And, and just, uh, you just, I find if I just shut up and listen, you guys get to all the good stuff. And... <laughs> all right. Um, so. Sorry to take you out of order there, but uh, we're in Bloomfield. You just had Karen. Um, if you got anything to say about why her name is Karen. Um, just liked it. Okay. And then what we're going to be doing is from here, um, you, you can talk a little. Eh, that's fine. Um, we want to start, Dad, your work. And you started saying where you're working. I guess you, you did that. When does Sperry come? Oh, that came later. Okay. Um, um the computers we see you with, is that Sperry? No, that's Fairchild Camera and Instrument. Do you have anything? I started with Allenby Dumont Laboratories, which, uh, you know, they were bought out Hold by... Hold on, okay, uh, ready? All right. Uh, after after uh, we, we got back from our honeymoon, uh, you know, I, I did have to find a job, and and I did find a the first job was with Allenby Dumont Laboratories. Uh, it was a laboratory, uh, Clifton, New Jersey, I believe it was in, mm. and uh, they had a number of uh, electronic projects that they were working on and with, one of which was a, uh, uh, a large area display system using an LGP-30 computer. Wow. This is, a, this is a vacuum tube machine that was uh, one, of the, one of the forerunners of, uh, of computing. Uh, I mean, there was no, no, no solid state even at this point in time. Uh, but I, I, I worked with that and we produced a large area display interface and it was demonstrated to the government and I can remember the one admiral uh, who was there looking at this large area display and he's looking at, the, at a plane, uh, a simulated plane uh, arriving at an airstrip and landing. He says, wow, if I had that I could line one every five minutes. <laughs> that, that stuck in my head. At any rate, then we... Uh, and you made ninety-two dollars a week. Ninety-two dollars a week. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that mm -hmm. was. That and was, I don't think that was take home. I think that was. Oh, that was gross or whatever, right? Gross, right. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, Allenby Dumont uh, Laboratories was eventually bought out by Fairchild Camera and Instrument Corporation, and I stayed with them. Uh, same job, but uh, different uh, company name. The uh, uh, the computing equipment, however, was then upgraded. Uh, one of the things that was upgraded to was a IBM 1620 scientific computer, uh, and it was uh, advertised as a desktop computer. I mean, this thing was 
was about the size of a desk and, and, <laughs> and <laughs> did about a, a fraction of what today's laptop would do. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, it operated, its main input-output mechanism was paper tape, punched paper tape. Uh, we, we had a paper tape reader on this wonderful computer and, and the, uh, uh, the printer, of course it wasn't a printer, it was a typewriter and that's exactly what it was, electronic typewriter that you typed in and it typed out to you. Uh, we had paper tape, uh, unbelievable rolls and amounts of paper tape. Uh, this, this wonderful computer, uh, it, it had 20,000 20, digits of memory. I mean, that was it. 20,000 digits of memory. And I'm talking digits, not bytes. A digit was six bits. A byte is eight bits. <laughs> this, is, this is a six bit uh, You're getting computer. windy. <laughs> okay. Hey, guys, come on. All right. Um, so, good. We got some good stuff on there. Um, your first child, you had Karen. Um, after that comes me. Is there anything interesting between Karen and me that's worth popping up? Hmm. What? Well, the um. When did the tree fall on the car and? That Basil? was our. F oh, oh, the tree on the car and Basil. Was that, that before Michael or? <sighs> Go ahead and tell it, and I'll, I'll if I got footage, I'll stick well, it. Well, I in. wanted right. to say first Hold that. On, ready? What? Oh. Our um, our apartment that we had in Bloomfield rented for seventy five dollars a month. That included heat, so all we had to pay was electric and phone. I remember the phone bill was like four dollars a month, and um, gas back then was like twenty nine cents a gallon. And uh, you have anything? Uh, yeah, prices were a bit different than they are <laughs> today. Yeah. But, uh... So that's that. And what was it that you were asking? Um, either something happened oh, between something me and Karen, and if not, then just start talking about um, your paper. <laughs> when, when did the tree fall on the car in Babel? Was that before or after? Or Don't mean, worry about when. Let's do the Babel thing, and when you're done, or the tree on the car, and then when you're done with that, if you got something, just roll with me. So, uh, um, after Karen was born, and we were were happy in the apartment things were going well and uh, and we like I said we wanted four kids when we were still young so uh, we were still in the apartment and um, got and it. it's not uh, or it's around this point in time or maybe shortly thereafter where Jan's parents uh, relocated from Melrose Avenue in mm -hmm. Irvington New Jersey down to uh, Bayville uh, which is right off of Barnegat Bay. Uh, near Tom's River. Near Tom's River, right. Uh, and, and they spent, oh, what did they pay for that they house? They bought a ranch house on a nice corner piece of property, uh, two bedrooms, a full bath, living room, huge kitchen, uh, utility room, screened in porch, uh, to, uh, a single car garage for $9,000. Brand new. This Brand was like in 62, I think. Uh, in, that, mm -hmm. in, in that vicinity, yes, uh, and and of course, uh, uh, being down in Bayville now, uh, we made many many trips to Bayville with with Karen and later on with with the other children. But uh, to start off, uh, we would go down on the weekend, especially during the summertime. I mean, it was it was unacceptable to not be, go down at least once a month and sometimes twice a month, uh, and and on one particular occasion. Uh, at, at this time, we had a different automobile. We had a, a 1958 Chevrolet uh, sedan, and, and this was a, it was a nice car, a very nice car. And we had this car down in Bayville. And on occasion, uh, there are storms that come up in Bayville. And on this on the particular occasion we were there, a very very severe windstorm came up in, in Bayville and, and I can recall looking out the back window of the house and, and there was a, uh, a tree there that uh, we used to call it the organ tree because it had the way its branches were laid out but that tree was blown so hard it almost looked like it was laying on the ground. It did not uproot but it, it was that far down on the ground. But another very large tree uh, did uproot, 
and it uprooted and fell across the driveway. And it just so happened my car was parked in the driveway when it <laughs> fell across the driveway and landed right square dead center on the top of the roof. Well, uh, that, that, uh, that was not a nice thing. Uh, and and we, we did get the tree off. The car could not, you could not open the driver's side door. So uh, it did run though. I mean, uh, we, we had the uh, car, the vehicle did uh, operate and run, but you had to get in and through the passenger side and, and slide over. And, and when I'm driving home, I had to keep my head down because the roof was so <laughs> crushed in. But we did get it home and we did get it repaired. And, and, and it was repaired until the next mishap occurred. And, and the next mishap occurred on the trip to Ithaca, New York. This is not a sink. This is not right. No? No. No. All right, hold on. Check it. Well, which, uh, was that, the Ithaca, New York before?